Why do you think we need portals in React? The classical example is when we render a model and we want it to escape CSS styles of the parent. If overflow of a container is set to hidden, our model will be clipped, just like here. As opposed to create portal method, which will render it higher in the DOM tree, where CSS styles of a clipping container won't reach it. Based on this example, we might fall into the trap of thinking that portals are just a fancy trick to resolve some CSS issues. But they came out in React 16, so how people solve those issues before? The workaround is to define global model at the highest level of the tree, like in the app component that is rendered directly into the root diff. So why portals really exist? To explain their actual usefulness, we we must reach to a deeper layer, an architectural layer, and we will discuss how React's declarative model, unidirectional data flow, and strategy of state collocation all fit into an improved app architecture that we can achieve because of portals. Okay, but how did we get into this CSS problem in the first place? It all starts with the fact that React is declarative. We could imagine a vanilla JS project in which we have an HTML file describing the same DOM tree and JS file with open model handler, which is connected to our open button. Our handler simply creates a new div and appends it to a root element. So there is no need for any fancy Star Trek technology, right? Well, in React we don't create DOM elements and append them ourselves. Calling DOM API methods is an imperative paradigm. In React we are declaring how we want our DOM tree to look like in JSX, and React does the imperative DOM operations for us. This is called declarative paradigm, and delegating DOM management to React simplifies frontend work. But it also has a hidden cost. It creates a limitation. We can't just jump between the DOM tree nodes whenever we want, like we did with imperative DOM operations. In JSX, the same as in HTML, we have to declare everything top-down. So when we have our app split it into a separate components, and we are declaring button in JSX that is in the nested component, we are then limited to describe what is rendered only on this particular level and below it. This is the declarative nature of JSX and the side effect of breaking the app into smaller components. We can of course plan ahead, and when we are starting with the component highest in the tree, we can define global model there, and of course hide it initially using some state like is open. And that's what a lot of people did before React portals. But now, how do we pass a signal from our button deep inside the tree to the outer layer? The thing is, React has unidirectional data flow, which means information travels only in one direction. This is in contrast to two-way data bindings, which were popular in Angular. In practice, it means that we can't trigger UI change of the parent component by updating local data of a child. If state changes in a child, only a part of the tree starting from this child will be re-rendered. But here we need to trigger the root re-render from the nested component. So, once again we have to prepare ahead and pass setState function from the parent to the child. If our child is deeply nested, this could lead to prop drilling. But of course we can set up React context or use some global state management library. The problem is we have introduced coupling. Now our code in the app component is tightly coupled with the child that triggers the model. If for some reason you would want to pass other information from the place where button is triggered to the model, for example dynamic model title, you would have to jump between both components to modify declaration site and call site. And again, here we have very shallow components tree, but imagine deeply nested structure that we would have in a real app. Tight coupling means less reusability, more complexity and code harder to maintain. And there is also one more problem. What React does when we set state? Anytime any of your data changes, just blow away your view completely and re-render it from scratch. So if state changes at the top of the tree, React will re-render everything, not only the model that has been opened. Of course in practice there is the whole reconciliation algorithm, and React is smart enough not to change the real DOM tree, but re-render is still a cost. And both of those problems of tight coupling and expensive re-renders can be fixed by collocation. It's a paradigm that means keeping related pieces of the code together. In our case it would mean keeping model at the same level as button that triggers the render. State is closed so we don't have prop drilling or additional context management, we don't have coupling between parts of the code that are very distant from each other, and when state is changed we don't re-render the entire React tree. Can you see it now? Because this is the punchline. React portals enable us to collocate related JSX code. We simultaneously keep those components together in our JSX slash virtual DOM, 
and at the same time React renders it in different locations in the real DOM, without sacrificing our declarative approach. And this is the beauty of React portals. This might be unusual, but I want to thank one Redditor, Hey I'm Rich, who completely surprised me a few days ago by sharing a super 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 flattering comment about one of my videos under this Reddit thread. I will link the video somewhere here. Thanks for all the support and recognition. I honestly really appreciate all the comments that you are leaving under my videos. So if you have some feedback, let me know what do you think and thanks for watching.